Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to talk about some uh, physical sense of uh, um, antiderivatives and uh, integrals. Um, basically, this mathematical apparatus like differentiation and integration um, they did not really appear in just vacuum. Somebody came up with these procedures. Well, at the uh, beginning uh, of the process of developing these um, mathematical apparatus um, were people who were very much concerned about physical sense of whatever we're all doing. And primarily Sir Isaac Newton and Leibniz, um, they were in the beginning of mechanics, as we know it right now, classical mechanics, and all these uh, procedures, differentiation and integration, were basically invented by, by them and some other people who developed it um, for the purpose of better explaining what's going on in the nature. So, um, being as it may, I would like to switch from the previous lecture where I was explaining basically purely mathematical apparatus of um, integration to something which is a little bit more physical. Primarily to justify whatever mathematical apparatus we are, we are using, whatever mathematical principles are in these um, purely physical concepts of mechanics, for instance. Now, you do remember that um, when I was trying to um, explain uh, the um, principles of differentiation, I was talking about speed or rate of change as basically the physical principle on which differentiation actually is, is based. So, let me just go back and well, not repeat, but rem remind you what exactly what was that, that was all about. Let's consider we are moving along certain trajectory. And our um, uh, movement is basically controlled by certain mathematical function which tells us how much distance we have covered um, from the moment t equals to zero to current moment t. So let's say we start it here. So for every moment t, this is t equals to zero, so for every moment t we know how much distance we have covered during our trip. So and that's what actually s of t is the length of this piece. So this is moment t. Okay? Now what we did next, we were talking about um, the speed and first we decided that if you have certain interval of time from t to t plus delta t, then during this time we have covered the distance from s of t to s of t plus delta t. So we have covered the difference if in distance e is basically the length of this little thing. So s of t plus delta t minus s of t is equal to the distance we have covered. Now the t plus delta t minus t is the time during which we have covered. So this basically uh, gives us some kind of average uh, speed during this time from t to t plus delta t. And if my delta t goes to zero, the limit of this, so this particular interval of time becomes smaller and smaller, the limit of this is an instantaneous speed at moment t. So let me just put the word limit. So that was our justification for introducing a derivative, because this limit is actually a derivative of function s of t by t. Sometimes 
we do it this way, sometimes we do it this way. Different notation, but anyway. Now, this notation is a little bit more commonplace because it actually reflects what exactly we did. So this is a differential, which is a limit divide limit of this different uh, of this in infinitesimal variable divided by this in infinitesimal that uh, uh, variable so the d ba basically uh, encapsulates in itself this fact of limit so these are concrete values and these are infinitesimal variables and we have a ratio now now let's recall another very very long time ago I had a lecture about harmony. Mathematicians do strive to have harmonious constructions and one of the, well ob obviously it's subjective but I, I do think it's a, one of the very interesting um, properties of harmony is if you have moved from A to B you have to be able to move from B back to A. So the operation which does something and in this case we have an operation of uh, differentiation from the function s of t we got the function derivative of s, s, s of t right so this is operation from one function we derive another and obviously if we can move back from the derivative back to um, uh, back to original function that would make actually the whole construction more harmonious and we did decide that this is an operation it's called integration I, I, I defined it uh, uh, in the previous lecture and um, that actually contributes to this harmonious thing but now let's go back to the physical entity of this now what happens in, in this case if our average speed during this interval delta t is equal to by the way, this thing obviously is delta s of t, right? It's an increment of the function. It's equal to increment of the function divided by increment of the time. Then increment of the function is equal to this average speed during this particular period of time, delta t times delta t, right? From this, I derive this. Now. Again, we are talking about physical sense of whatever we were doing. So far, so good. That this is an average speed during this time interval. Now, how can I construct the function s of t? s of t is the total time I have covered from moment z to moment from from moment zero to moment t, right? This one, and it contains many small intervals. So if I will divide this into small intervals, and on each interval I basically can do this, and then I will summarize all these small intervals, that would be my total distance which I have covered, right? So basically a sum of these, of these, sum of these, would give me the total distance. No. Now, obviously this is not precise because this is an average speed, this is an average speed during this interval, but if the time interval becomes smaller and smaller, so the number of these little intervals is increasing, my precision of the result of summation of these things would be better and better approximating my real uh, distance which I have covered, right? So, basically we are talking about summation of something if my delta t is converging to zero, so each one of these is infinitesimal but the number of these will be growing into infinity then my approximation to s of t would be better and better. So what did those people who invented the integration actually, what did they do? Well, and primarily it's Newton and Leibniz, as I was saying before. Well, they actually used this as a prototype for 
um, notation uh, of the uh, integration. So what they did is instead of this sigma they imply that this is a sum of infinite uh, of infinite number of um, of terms here. So they used the letter S but they stretched it very much and called it an integral. Now this is obviously as delta t goes to zero this would be my instantaneous speed which is actually a derivative, right? This is a derivative. And this becomes, instead of delta, they use d to indicate that this is infinitesimal. Basically very similar to whatever we did here, right? So, let me just replace this with this. And here we go. And this is now my exact distance. Well, obviously, later on they realized that to make this actually precise you do have to add constant. We were talking about this before. But in any case, well, or rather here, doesn't really matter where I add it here. Now, what, what's the meaning of this constant? Well, basically, I would interpret it as um, the distance covered before my moment t is equal to zero from some other point. And obviously, this piece remains exactly the same. So, in any case, I wanted to justify that this is not just, uh, you know, somebody came up with this particular notation um, uh, as I was basically suggesting that let's just forget about the meaning of this, just accept it as a notation of integration. But actually it does have this um, physical sense underneath. There is a basis for this. And the basis is that this constitutes an instantaneous speed times um, an in, in infinitesimal um, uh, in, in, uh, interval of time. And if you will summarize the infinite number of infinitesimal variables uh, that would actually constitute the original function uh, distance as a function of time which we started from. So, um, consider integration as basically a, an operation which is um, delivering my distance based on speed. Um, and obviously it's uh, it, it can be uh, expanded to many other processes where it's not really like a speed but something like a rate of change of something and the result so this constitutes the rate of change of something and this is a result of that change during certain amount of time so that was in the beginning of differentiation and integration as Newton and uh, and Leibniz, primarily these two, and then obviously many other mathematicians, that's exactly what they put um, as, as a physical foundation of all this mathematical apparatus. Now, we cannot really say what was the uh, physical or natural foundation for um, basic operations like addition or multiplication we were just thinking about. Maybe people wanted to count something. But in case of integration and differentiation, we do have the, the, the physical need and real people who felt that this is the apparatus which, which they need to analyze mechanics of movement and any other um, rates uh, of different processes which are happening in nature. So this is something which, we, which, which happened during our known history. It's documented. So there are real people, there is a real need for this, and the real mathematical response to physical, uh, mechanical, whatever, and other uh, natural needs. All right. Um, that's basically all I wanted to say um, about integration. I wanted to put it on a certain... Um, more natural, more, more, more physical um, foundation. So you 
do not really think about integration and differentiation as just two abstract operations. No, these are very much used in like everywhere in whatever we are doing, starting from just opening the faucet in the, uh, in the bathroom and uh, ending with maybe spaceships. Everywhere, all these mathematical um, uh, operations, integration, differentiation, etc., they're all used very much in our day-to-day -day, um, life. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.